money looks all right. I assure you, Miss Teston, it's the very best the United States government makes. I hope your gold proves to be as genuine. You have the metallurgist's report, haven't you? Now, look, why don't we try trusting each other for a change? If this works out, we've got a good thing going for us. Kate can get the gold, Mr. Rang has the market for it. We ought to be able to swing a deal like this two, three times a year. And just what is to be your role in any future transactions, Mr. Haggerty? Now, you wouldn't want to cut me out, would you, Mr. Rang? After all, I bought you and Kate together. For which you are receiving a commission. Let's get one thing straight, Mr. Eng. I deal only through Shep Haggerty now and in the future. It's agreeable with me. I was merely trying to... What is this? Keep your mouth shut and nobody will get hurt. Get over there. Move! Don't let him bat an eye. January and Manhattan was a winter wonderland. Like millions of other New Yorkers, I was wondering how to escape cold and snow. The cablegram was waiting for me when I finally mushed to my office that morning. The message consisted of just two words. It read, Hey Rube. It was signed Shep. It was a cry from the past. Shep and I had been buddies in the army a couple of wars ago. Hey Rube is the SOS of Big Top and Carney workers. The dog faces in my outfit had used it for the same thing. It wasn't much, but it was enough. I knew what it meant. Shep Haggerty was in trouble, big trouble. I'd never heard Shep use Hey Rube, but he'd gone to the help of a lot of other guys who had, including one named Mike Hammer. I put in a long distance call to Shep's office in Honolulu. Ten minutes later, the operator called back to tell me Shep wasn't in and wasn't expected to return soon. She asked if I wanted to speak to Mrs. Haggerty. I told her I did. I'd never met Shep's wife. In fact, it had slipped my mind that Shep was married. Yes, operator, please put him on. Hello, Mr. Hammer. Did you get my cablegram? Your cablegram? Well, Shep told me how you used to use the words, hey, Rube, in the army. Yeah. Is Shep in some sort of trouble? He's disappeared. Since day before yesterday, I... I'm afraid something terrible has happened. Have you notified the police? Well, why not? Because... Please, Mr. Hammer, I can't talk on the telephone. I... I'm so afraid. All right, all, all right. Now, now, look, Mrs. Haggerty, you just sit tight and try not to worry. I'll get there as fast as I can. Okay. If it had been any other time of year in New York and anybody else but Shep Haggerty, I would have probably decided I couldn't afford a trip to Hawaii. But with Shep in trouble and Times Square looking like a small edition of Little America, Anna Haggerty's call for help was too strong to resist. I called for reservations on the first plane west. One morning I was slogging through the snow to my office in New York and the next I arrived in the land of soft trade winds and warm sunshine. During a short stopover in San Francisco, I'd cabled Anna Haggerty my time of arrival and that I'd be registered at the Hawaiian Village Hotel. When 
I got to the hotel, there was a message from Anna asking me to come to the Haggerty house. Oh, yeah, thanks. Listen, have my bags into my room. Huh? Hey, boy. Shep and Anna lived across the island from Honolulu in a small house overlooking the sea. I found her on the lanai overlooking the beach. Saggedy? Yes? On my camera. Thank you so much for coming, Mr. Hammer. Now, uh, let's, uh, let's not call each other Mr. Hammer and Mrs. Haggerty. You, Anna, me, Mike, all right? Have you heard from Shep? No. Hey, hey, now, hey. He's ruining a very lovely pair of eyes. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. All right. Now, when did you see Shep last? Tuesday. He came home for lunch, and then he went back to the office. Uh, well, did he seem changed? I mean, disturbed, upset in any way? No more than usual. How much is that? Shep's a very restless man. Yeah, he always was. Always before he could do something about it. Before what? He married me. Never said anything about it, but... I knew how he felt. And how was that? Trapped. Trapped by me and by the islands. By not having money. He wanted... something different. Something more. A lot more. Yeah. Tell me, has he ever disappeared like this before? Yes, he's gone to the other islands on business, to, to Kauai and Maui mostly, but... But just for a day, two at the most. Uh, well, then how do you know he hasn't done the same thing this time? Well, I thought that's what he'd done at first, until I went to his office. Yeah? Well, there'd been a fight there. Well, how did you know that? There were a couple of chairs overturned, and, and the closet door was splintered and broken, and... And? and there were blood stains on the floor. Why didn't you go to the police? I was afraid of what those blood stains might mean. Well, it could have meant that somebody killed Shep. Or that... Shep killed somebody. Yeah. Do you have anybody in particular in mind? No. No? Well, I know that Shep's been seeing an awful lot of a woman lately. A woman, eh? You know who? I don't know who she is or where she is, Mike. That's why I've been so afraid. If, well, if I thought she was all right, that Shep hadn't hurt her, I, I wouldn't have sent for you. I'd have gone to the police. I'll still go if you tell me to. No, 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 no. I, I do want to get into his office, though. Do you have a key? Would you get it for me? Yeah. Shep's office was in a grubby little one-story building in Honolulu's backyard. Anna had been right. There'd been a fight. The closet door had been broken open from the inside as if someone had been locked in. But I was more interested in the stains on the rug. Somebody had been hurt, and hurt bad. Stay where you are. I never argue with a lovely lady. Stand up. Sure. Who are you? You're not one of them. <clears throat> I'm not? Who are you? Well, uh... No! I'm just going for my wallet. See? Look. Let go of me! Right, baby, not quite yet. Just a second. We're going to have a little conversation first. Now, let's start by introducing ourselves. Ladies first. Come on. My name's Kate Tustin. All right, Katie, dear girl. What are you doing wandering around behind this iron powder puff, huh? I thought you were one of the killers. Killers? Oh, yes, the men who killed Shep Haggerty. Shep is dead? How did it happen? You better talk, baby. Kate Tustin talked. She went right back to the beginning and told me about Shep Haggerty bringing her together with a Chinese named Eng. Kate had brought a trunk full of gold to Honolulu. She had it on consignment from several small smelters back in the States. Eng was willing to pay her $45 an ounce for it, $10 an ounce over the price established by the federal government. Kate had promised the men who had supplied her with the gold to pay them $40 an ounce, giving her a nice fat profit. 
What Eng would make would depend on how much he could resell the gold for in the Far East, apparently. But the whole deal blew sky high when two masked gunmen invaded the office, killed Shep, and made off with Kate's gold and Eng's money. When Eng and I broke out of the closet, Shep's body was gone. Eng thinks the killers took it because they knew we wouldn't go to the police. And with the body gone, there'd be no evidence of murder. So for a stinking two and a half percent commission. Shep got himself killed, huh? Were you a friend of Shep's? Yeah. Yeah, my name's Hammer, Mike Hammer. I'm a private detective from New York. Shep's wife sent for me. Maybe you didn't know Shep had a wife. My business with Shep Haggerty, Mr. Hammer, was just that business. Knowing Shep, that's hard to believe. Knowing me, it wouldn't be. But I don't know you. Would you like to? Well, correct me if I'm wrong, but I feel a proposition coming on. Do you want to hear it? No crime to listen. You're a private detective and you're a friend of Shep's. Mm -hmm. So you'd like to get Shep's killers, wouldn't you? Mm -hmm. I think Eng engineered the holdup. Yeah? Go on. The way Kate told it, it stuck together. Only Shep, Kate, and Eng had known about the deal and that the gold in the money was to change hands on Tuesday afternoon. By the same token, Kate could have planned the job. But there are a couple of things in her favor. First, she wouldn't have come back to Shep's office. Second, she wouldn't have offered to hire me. There's 2,500 in it for you if you turn up the killers. What you really want me to turn up is your gold. It's the same thing, isn't it? Maybe, maybe not. Look, Mr. Hammer, I'll take care of Mrs. Haggerty, too. Shep didn't get his commission. I'll pay it to her, if you help me. Well? You got yourself a deal. But I'll get in touch with you. I'm at the Reef Hotel, and you? At the Hawaiian Village. Oh, Eng is staying there, too. How oh, very convenient. Mr. Hammer. Is there anything I can do for you? <clears throat> I'll let you know. Oh, no, this is getting to be monotonous. I'm Mr. Eng, Mr. Hammer. I understand you wish to talk to me. Sit down, Mr. Hammer. What are you going to do first, Eng? Talk or shoot? The gun is merely for psychological purposes. I find that people are more likely to answer my questions when they know I have the upper hand. <laughs> Well, if you've got some questions and I got the answer, there's no reason why we can't reach an amicable agreement. Why don't we discuss it over lunch? Yeah. An excellent idea. Fine. Let's go. I imagine you're interested in how I know about you, Mr. Hammer. Well, I imagine you have a pretty good spy system. <laughs> As a matter of fact, I do. One of my employees was following Miss Tustin, and he overheard your conversation in Mr. Haggerty's office. Why haven't Kate Tustin followed? In my business, Mr. Hammer, one does not survive unless he is suspicious of everyone. And what business are you in, Mr. Eng? Any that will show a profit. Oh, anything goes, huh? No, not anything. I do draw the line at a certain point. And what line do you draw? At robbery and murder. But Kate Tustin doesn't think so. Miss Tustin is a very beautiful woman, and a very clever one. Mm. Clever enough, at least, to accuse me in an effort to divert suspicion from herself. But I suppose you've considered that. Mm -hmm. What does my face tell you, Mr. Hammer? Unfortunately, not a thing. That's the inscrutable Chinese for you. <laughs> my man tells me Miss Tustin offered you 2500 plus another 2500 to Mrs. Haggerty if you found the killers and recovered her gold. Yeah. I'll double her offer, Mr. Hammer. Uh, 10,000 bucks, a lot of money. But not to recover almost 100,000. <laughs> you know, this is a funny situation. Oh? Well, Kate Tustin accuses you of quarterbacking the robbery, and you accuse her, and yet you both want to hire me to prove that the other's a liar. <laughs> 
And which one do you think is telling the truth and which is lying? Uh, both. Both? Mm hmm. I don't believe I know what you mean. Well, well, that's the inscrutable New Yorker for you. <laughs> what do you do with this thing, plant it? After lunch, I went back to the room to telephone Anna, but this time she beat me to it. She was calling from Shep's office. She was excited and wanted to see me right away. I told her to sit tight and I'd be right over. On the way to Shep's office, I tried to think of the best way to tell her that Shep was dead. I finally decided to take the easy way out and not tell her at all for the time being. Anna. You didn't take long. I never will when I'm gonna see you. What would you want to see me about? Oh, look. What's this? Where'd you get this? From a man who came to the house just after you left. He said his name was Lassen. He asked for Shep, and when I said Shep wasn't home, he asked a lot of questions. What kind of questions? Did I know where Shep was? When did I expect him back? And how long had he been gone? Mm -hmm. What'd you tell him? Just that I didn't know. Go on, go on. Well, then he said that he wanted to repay Shep some money he owed him, and, and he gave me this, $2,000. Did he say what he owed Shep the money for? No, and it doesn't make sense, Mike. If anybody had owed Shep $2,000, I'm sure he would have told me about it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What'd you say his name was, Lassen? Yes. Shep must have an address book around here somewhere. Maybe the last one's in it. Uh, honey, you go on home, huh? Well, what are you gonna do? Oh, I've got some things to do. I'll, uh, I'll call you later at the house, all right? Goodbye, Anna. Shep's address book contained a lot of names, but Lassen wasn't one of them. I had to find out about Shep's mysterious creditor, and I started by telephoning Kate Tustin and asking her to meet me at my hotel room. I got here as fast as I could. What is he doing here? Well, he's a client of mine, too. Then you're not working for me. Well, that's fine with me, Chickie, but what am I going to do when I find your gold? You mean you know where it is? What about my money? I'll answer both those questions if you'll answer one for me. Have either of you heard of a man named Lassen, Kate? No. Eng? Lassen. I think I've heard of a man by that name. Where? Yes. A friend of mine once employed him as a bodyguard. You think you can call your friend? Yes, I suppose so. Yeah. Operator? Eng made the call. We got Lassen's address. Before leaving Kate and Eng, I sent a telegram. Then I went back to Shep's office to wait. If I was right, I knew who would be walking through that door. Lassen delivered your telegram. I figured he would, Shep. You don't need to persuade her, Mike. Are you alone? All alone. You're looking good, Mike. I feel lousy. Why, because of me? Yeah. How'd you figure it out, Mike? It wasn't hard. It was meant to be. Yeah, and it might have been if Larson and his friend hadn't made the mistake of using blank cartridges with paper wadding. And if you hadn't made the mistake of sending Larson back to Anna with that 2,000 bucks, why did you do that, Shem? Your conscience bothering you a little bit about Anna, huh? Hmm? A little. Mostly I wanted Larson to find out what was going on. So where do we go from here? To wherever you stashed the dough and the gold. 
Then? Well, then you're off the hook. How so? Well, Kate and Aang are in no position to make any trouble for you. If you return the money and the gold, you're off the hook. What about Anna? Well, you're a little late thinking about her. But for whatever it's worth, all she knows is that you're missing, and that's all she ever has to know. That you went away and that you came back. If you go back to her and stay with her and give her a few of the breaks that she deserves. You make it sound real simple. It is, Shep. No, Mike. So I give up nearly $200,000. So what does that make me, a real lucky guy to get off so easy? No. It makes me just what I've always been, a big fat nothing, and I'm not going back to that. Well, then what did you come here for? To make a deal. What kind of a deal? 20,000 bucks. It's not enough dough. How much do you then want? Not that much money, not that kind of dough. It's money, isn't it? It'll buy things. Yeah, including trouble. You and I don't talk the same language, Mike. What's the use of talking anymore? That's a fast ship. Either we leave together, or I leave alone. You're bluffing, Mike. You wouldn't use that on me. Not after what we've been through together. You do remember, don't you? Oh, yeah, I remember. Like it was yesterday. That's just what it was. Yesterday. It's all over now. Now I'm thinking about right now. About tomorrow and the day after tomorrow and the day after that. I'm thinking about you, Shep, and Anna. So long, Mike. <laughs> You're right, Shep. I couldn't use the iron on you. Come on, boy. On your feet, Hammer. I thought you said you were all alone. I was. Buddy boy's telling the truth, Hammer. He didn't know we were following him. I thought I told you I'd take care of this. You didn't seem to be doing so good. And what do you think you're going to do? I'll tell you what I'm not going to do. Let's leave your pal in any condition to talk about us and we're gone. Get your hands up, Hammer. Shake him down. the rest of that night and most of the next two days at Honolulu Police Headquarters. On the morning of the third day, I was released, just in time to help Anna bury Shep. After that, I only had one thing left, to say goodbye to Anna. Mike? Hmm? Kate Tustin and Mr. Ring came to see me this morning. Oh, they did. They gave me some money and they told me why. Hmm. You could have saved yourself a lot of trouble if you'd gone to the police about them. Why didn't you? Well, technically, they hadn't broken any laws since they hadn't actually completed the sale of the gold. Anyway, I'm going to take Kate Tustin back to the state so she can turn the gold over to the government at a legal price. That's all the interest I have in it. But the truth is, if you'd involved them with the police, they wouldn't have given me the money, would they? Oh, well, I don't know what you're talking about. Anyway, I got a boat to catch. Oh, must you go so soon? Oh, yeah, yeah. See, I got to get back to New York and shovel the snow off my sidewalk. You know, I've never seen snow. You haven't? No kidding. You know, I'd like to show it to you someday. I hope you can. And that I can repay you for what you've done for me. Oh, don't worry about that. That's one thing Shep did for you. Well. Aloha, Mike. <laughs> 